Sure. There, TJ, how do you feel about having a rematch with Hennon so quickly? I'm pumped. Um, I get to fight in front of my hometown. You know, the UFC was scheduled to come to Sacramento that date, and so, you know, they're going to put the champ of SAC on the card, and I'm, I'm excited about it. It's going to be fun. You, there wasn't somebody else you would have preferred to fight instead of rematching with him right away? Um, I don't want to be the guy that's going to call who I want to fight. I just want to be the company man and, and fight who they put in front of me and uh, just keep winning. Certainly, obviously, I would think you have a lot of confidence going into this fight. Absolutely. I mean, just as much as before, though. I mean, I can't get overly confident. I got to respect him just like I did the first fight. And, you know, he is very dangerous and just want to make sure I go in there with uh, the same respect level for him and uh, about the most belief in myself. Do you think you'll be able to use the same game plan or now that obviously he knows what you're going to do, do you have to switch things up? Well, you know, I'm always going to add things to my game and, and keep him guessing. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it'll be a surprise. I've heard that uh, Coach Bang is still going to stick with you and continue working with you and that he actually hasn't really gone over to Colorado yet, that he was working with all of you guys and, and all the different camps. Were you surprised that he's still uh, around over there? Um, no, I'm not surprised because uh, <laughs> You know, he's addicted to coaching, and uh, he's got the best team in the world right now. And, uh, and he's in the process of opening his gym, but this fight came so fast. He's actually he's actually living with me right now. He moved his family to Colorado, <laughs> and he's living with me right now. So I don't even get to escape coaching. We go train all day, and then we come back home and watch tape and train some more in the backyard. What kind of a roommate is he? He's an excellent roommate, actually. <laughs> you know, he uh, keeps the house clean. He helps the wife out with chores, and uh, it's good. My laundry gets done even twice as fast now, so it's it's good. You just got married also. Uh, how was that life change and all of this just kind of been such a big moment and year for you? Oh, I don't think marriage changed anything for me. We've been together for a long time, so it's kind of been just the same routine, um, other than the fact of just the media obligations I got going on and uh, just the time that takes. Who gave you the black eye? Joseph Benavidez yesterday, actually. I, we had a, a, a tough uh, grappling session. I got poked right in the eye. So I was lucky that it didn't mess anything up. Yeah. TJ, is there anything you're going to do different? This time around with Brow. Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna add things to my game. You know, I gotta, I gotta keep guessing, and uh, can't just come out be the exact same fighter. You know, I mean, you gotta adapt and keep getting better. And there's things that I'll watch my fight, even though it was a really good performance. There's things I could have done better, and uh, things I can always change up. And uh, who knows, maybe he'll get submitted this time. I know you said you kind of mimicked uh, Dominic's footwork. Do you, you plan kind of doing that the same, or? It wasn't the fact that I, I, I just mimicked it, but I made it my own kind of deal. You know, I mean, it's just something I'm continuing to work on and. Uh, change it for each fight. Sometimes, you know, I won't have to move as much, and it just kind of depends on the way the fight goes. So do you have any uh, pre-fight rituals? Something you do the, the day of the fight, same food you eat? No, not same really. Underwear. I kind of not, not try to think about that, just go with the flow, and uh, you know, I don't want anything that's going to mess up your, your mindset going into a fight, because what if that ritual didn't happen, or you know, <laughs> something didn't go perfectly, then you don't want to be set on that, you know? So I just kind of go with the flow. No coconut water? Oh, I mean, I'll drink coconut water, but it's not, it's not a ritual, you know? You know, I'm not exactly even sure how to phrase this, but a lot of people were shocked and awed when you beat Hennon Burrell. He was so dominant. But um, does that bother you at all, that, that people doubted you that much against him and, and they're just completely just blown away by the fact that you actually won the fight? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I guess you can kind of look at it that way. I mean, obviously because of the way I believed in myself and I knew that I could win. So, I mean, it was kind of... You know, they gave him a little bit too much credit, but he had been dominant for so long. You know, I mean, he'd been dominant for a long time, and uh, I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know really answer that. It's a tough question. DJ, there's a lot of wrestlers in the UFC. I know you're a wrestler. Who do you think the best wrestler is right now in the UFC, in a weight class? Mm, I don't know. That's a Wait, besides yourself. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's always a good answer, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, wrestling is so much different for MMA. You know, MMA wrestling is so different. You can even have a, a guy that didn't wrestle in college be the best wrestler in MMA. It's, it's hard for me to say who uh, implements their game the most and who, who relies on it the most. I don't really know. It's all good. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have you seen that article that uh, Hanan talked about? He just woke up in uh, the locker room after the fight. And if so, like, what were your thoughts on that? That he said he didn't remember most of the fight. Um, I felt like you know he, he had to come up with some sort of reason why he got he got beat up so bad. Um, I feel like that that's not accurate because he came out with the second round as his best round. I feel like after the second round is when I actually broke him because his best round was the round after he got knocked out. I'm not saying that he didn't go on autopilot, but uh, you know I mean if you're not losing for that long, you gotta have some kind of excuse. I feel like. What's the best wedding present you got? Um. Shoot, I don't even know. <laughs> just everyone that went to my wedding in Mexico. It was amazing just having everyone there, you know, my closest friends and family. Two more guys. Uh, 
Yeah, a lot of people say sometimes, you know, the guys who have been champions, that they don't really feel like that belt's theirs until they've defended it. But being how dominant that Hanan was, like you said, with this incredible streak that he had before you won uh, the title from him, do you feel like for you that uh, defending it is actually going to solidify that even more? Well, it's weird because I'm defending it against the same person. So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I beat him I beat him good enough that, you know, I, that's my belt. You know, it'd be different, I guess, if I was fighting someone else. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to it for a while so it won't really matter. <laughs> you know, how much did the mood change in the gym when you came home with that belt? Certainly uh, Uriah, Joseph, you know, these are guys that have fought for the title. How much did the, the mood uh, get elevated with you bringing that belt home? Um, I think quite a bit, actually. You know, the intensity jumped up in the room, and everyone's training just a little bit harder, even though we trained as hard as we could possibly anyways. But, uh just kind of brought the, the good vibe to the to the camp, and it's always been that thing saying that Team Alpha Male doesn't have a belt, you know, and I feel like we just kind of switched that around, and, uh, you know, we're going to have Mendez get another one here soon. That's what I was just about to ask, was how's Chad doing with the uh, postponement? You know, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, especially just because the way, I mean, you, you get hurt and that stuff happens and you just got to wait, you know, so it's, uh, it's tough for him to have to do that, but uh, he, he's taking it good. He's continuing to train, but not too hard, so he can peak at the right time still, and, uh, just getting better, becoming a better fighter all around. So she was saying about, you know, Chad and Aldo mm -hmm. and Goran recently, he talked in an interview in Brazil, saying that the thing about the seminar, although it was like misunderstood, was something that really bothers him, you yeah. know, and keeps him motivated to this, uh, to this the rematch, fight. yes, to the fight. And the things about Aldo and Chad, you know, it, it kept, it's like increasing to, yeah. you know. So do you think like this rivalry against Nova and Yao is something that motivates you more? No, I didn't motivate, motivate me anymore to, to fight Burrell. Um I don't know if it does for Chad, but it, for me, it's just becoming the champion of the world is what motivates me. I mean, that's the most motiv I mean, you can't get any more motivation than that. He had the belt and I wanted it. Um, it wasn't the fact that he's from the team that had beaten some of my teammates. It's just uh, who's in your way. You know, and I feel just the same about fighting him again. You know, even though he doesn't have the belt, now he's my next biggest match. And uh, that's the most important thing to me right now. Do you guys keep the belt at the gym? No, I keep that at my house. I don't want those guys stealing that. <laughs> you know, there'll be some greed in there in the gym. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be taking it home. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah.